Hello and welcome to the Rangers Journal. My name is Kai Watson and it's currently Thursday morning. It's probably not been as busy as we thought it would be this week so far. Only really had Ben Davis confirmed as an outgoing. It looks like Todd Campbell and Scott Wright may well be confirmed today. Also had rumours that we rejected a loan bid from Norwich for Rabi Matondo, so that's quite interesting. They obviously performed really well at the weekend. I don't know if it's just because it was a loan bid and they'd be able to move him on permanently, but that bid's apparently been rejected. Not had as many rumours again as fans probably would have liked, but they have done business pretty quietly over the window. You look at Robin Proper, that came out with nowhere in the morning. It was pretty much confirmed the same day. Vashlav Cherny as well was kind of came out of nowhere. And again, was confirmed very quickly. There has been two rumours though. That's why we're going to focus this video. We're not going to focus on the outgoings. We're going to focus on the two rumours that came out yesterday. First one being Stanley and Soki. Hoffenheim defender. Came through the PSG Academy. Can play left back, play centre back. Mostly played centre back recently. Despite coming through PSG as a left back. So we'll take a look at him. And then Nadim Bajrami. Sassu Olo player. They obviously got relegated last season. Had quite a tough year. But if you recognise the name, again, I put this on Twitter, it's probably from the fact that he scored a goal inside 22 seconds against Italy at the Euros. An absolute screamer as well that he's just rattled at the near post. Obviously gave Italy a bit of a shock. Now, being were one of those sides that I think a lot of people want, what people want in Scotland to do, they just went for it. And they were quite exciting to watch, and Bajs Ramey was a big part of that. So we'll look at, look at him not only from last season, because, again, I saw all those struggles, so it's maybe not a good barometer of how good a player he is. Look at his time at M play as well. And then we'll look at Nsoki and kind of what he's managed to do over the next couple of years, the last few years. So, let's get started. We'll start off by looking at Nsoki and we'll look at the first thing that a lot of people look at and that's the injury record. So, looking at it from the transfer market data, it looks like he's only missed 26 games in the last five seasons. I know he did miss quite a lot last season through kind of different injuries, which is maybe why a lot of people are concerned. So, they have listed that he had... Six games he missed with a hip problem, two games with a knee problem, and five games with patellar tendon problems. So obviously those are a few different injuries which might be cause for concern. But seasons before that, he really didn't miss a lot of football. And I think he's a really interesting player and one that Clermont's already managed at Bruges. So you must rate him highly to go back in for him. You're not going to go back in for a player that's played for you that you didn't rate. I think it's quite interesting when he came through PSG in the 18-19 season. He had 12 League 1 appearances. So they obviously rated him quite highly then and he managed to move to Nice where he played about 20 games in League 1 for two seasons before moving to Bruges where he was a key player. Had a really good season, started the 22-23 season at Bruges before moving to Hoffenheim. And again, he's been a bit of a regular there. Not so much last season, obviously I spoke about a few of those injuries that he missed games, but the season before he played 19 games in the Bundesliga. Like I said previously, he can play left-back or left-centre-back. He did start as a left-back, but it seems more recently that he's exclusively played as a centre-back. So let's look at your stats from last season and look at the player a bit. So Stanley and Soke, he's 25 years old, French 6 foot, like I say, currently plays for Hoffenheim. Transfer market have him valued at £2.1 million. Looking at his key stats, 11 appearances, 7 from the start, played 632 minutes. 8.4% pass accuracy, 39.3% long ball accuracy, 1.14 interceptions per 90. 6.55 recoveries, 47.6% tackles won, 52.4% duels won, and 57.1% aerial duels won. Defensive numbers are actually really good there, and you look at the footage, he's very comfortable on the ball. Look at the footage from PSG, they actually kind of reminded me of Hefty, the way he gets the ball forward. There's quite a few flicks and tricks and getting by players using his pace and power. I think the big thing for him is, that's one of his best attributes, he's kind of physical presence, he's strong, he's quick good in the tackle, and again, he's good in the ball, good at driving out with it, which I think is something that can be really beneficial to kind of create space and open up the game when you've got a defender that's that comfortable and able to not just pass through the lines, but also run through the lines themselves and open the game up, has to pull a player out of position if they're driving over the halfway line. You're pulling either a defender or a midfielder out of position, creating space for others. And we've seen how kind of effective our wing play has been recently. So if he's playing on the left side, he's going to create a lot of space for Hefty which can only mean good things. I think there could be potential for Nsoka to strike up a really interesting partnership with Hefty down that side, just with how comfortable both of them are on the ball, how positive they are, how they want to drive forward. And again, that pace as well, I think that could be something really interesting to watch, the kind of combinations that they could bring. Like I say, Nsoka started as a left-back and can cover there as well. 
and one of his best attributes apart from the kind of physical side and the pace and the power is his ability on the ball, his ability to kind of create space and get by a player that could be a bit of a risk playing at centre back. So we just need to hope that he's kind of sensible with that and it's not every single time he's trying to come out with the ball and beat a player. But he's had plenty of experience in League One, a good, really good season in Belgium and now Bundesliga experience and he's 25 years old. So you think with that experience, he would know kind of when to drive and know when to sit. It was the keep that reported this, so obviously a very good source. I don't know if it's going to be a loan or a loan to buy. I think the initial report said it was just going to be a loan, so it'll be interesting to see if anything comes of this one over the next kind of 36 hours. Now moving on to a link, it's definitely one that excited me. So Nadim Bajrami currently plays for Sassuolo. 25 years old, he's Albanian, 5 foot 10, transfer market having valued at 3.6 million. 28 appearances in Serie A last season, 15 from the start, managed 2 goals and 2 assists, 328 minutes per goal contribution. 82.2% pass accuracy, 76.9% long ball accuracy, 1.51 chances created per 90, 56.7% dribble success per 90, 3.91 recoveries and 41.3% duels won. What you get with Bajrami is a really intelligent, gifted, technical attacking midfielder. He can also play on the wing, but I think if we're looking at him, the chances are we're probably going to have him in the number 10 spot. He's played it wide for Albania, he's played in the 10, so that versatility is also something that's really interesting. According to Albanian media, it's a deal that's already done and Rangers are looking for a loan this season with the option to buy. If I didn't actually specify if it was a loan or obligation at the end, but it would be an initial loan this season and looking to buy him next season. The numbers on the base in terms of the goal contributions might not seem overly impressive, but he was playing in a really poor Sassuolo side last season that managed to get relegated, so now they're playing in Serie B, which is probably the only reason that we even have a chance of getting by Shram. I mean, why they'd maybe be looking to sell? Presumably be on a decent wage, having moved from M play another Serie A club. But the fact that they've been relegated is presumably why they're looking to get rid. So again, it's kind of hard to judge the stats on that season, playing in a really poor side in a really tough division. Obviously not the most attacking side, they were quite defensive, didn't really play to his strengths, which is getting on the ball, creating, getting shots from distance away. He's really good at striking the ball from range. If you watch any kind of highlight compilations of them. There's plenty of free kicks and 25-30 yarders. So looking at, going back to the 21-22 season when he was playing for Empoli in Serie A, an Empoli side that finished mid-table, he's got six goals and five assists in 35 games, which is much more impressive. And then the season before they played in Serie B, he got five goals and eight assists in 36 appearances. Because Empoli let him be the main man, they let him be the creator. They weren't an overly defensive side. I'm not saying they were playing with free flow and attacking football. But they were the defensive side that kind of Sassuolo were last season in their struggles. So again, I think it's hard to judge a player because that's not going to be what happens if he comes to Rangers. When he comes to Rangers, he's going to get plenty of the ball. He's going to have the chance to create, the chance to get shots from range. So it's not really a comparison you can make looking at his season at Sassuolo, a struggle inside in Serie A compared to coming to a club the size of Rangers that's going to spend most of the game attacking most of the game in the opponent's half and we don't get plenty of the ball. It's hard it's hard to judge in that sense how, how good he's going to be, but what you do get from him, like I said, is a creative attacking midfielder that's really good in the ball, really confident, strong at driving forward. Again, like I say, he loves taking a shot from range and he scored an incredible amount of screamers in his time, not just for or not just at club level but at international level as well. And again, not just the one that he scored against Italy. But there's also a game Albania played against Czech Republic in which he scored a worldie. And a one all draw, another player that scored the goal in that game was Czerny for Czech Republic. So that's quite, quite an interesting little link there. But like I said, he's a player that would really excite me. He's a massive upgrade in the number 10 spot. Even if you discount the kind of numbers from the Serie A season just on pure football and ability, I think he's much better than what we have at the club right now. And that's including a top form, Todd Cantwell. Again, like I say, he looks to be away, but still counting him as being a player at the club. And Yanis Hadji as well, I think, by Strami blows both out of the water. Not just in terms of experience at that level, but like I said, just in terms of pure football and ability. And he played for kind of Switzerland at youth levels coming up and then decided to choose Albion. He's had 26 caps for them and scored five goals. So that's the kind of quality of play we're talking about. Playing Serie A for a few years now and plenty of experience at international level. So those were... Really the only solid links to come out from yesterday. Like I said, the Bajrami one came from 
Albanian media who suggested it was already done. There was an Italian reporter that said that Sassuolo rejected the deal, but nothing else has come from that since that was reported late last night. Not seen anything else from it, and I don't know how credible the source is. So going with Albanian media and reported the deal's almost done is what we're going to go with just now when we keep reporting on Soki. Probably the biggest kind of outlet in France and one of the most reliable sources. So we'll see how that goes. But these are two links that, again, I really like. Both players have good experience at a good level, they instantly improve. Deciding my opinion, I think, in Soki, if he's going to play left centre back, it's a massive improvement on Ben Davison and improvement on John Souter as well. And by Ramey, like I said, I think it's a massive upgrade in the number 10 position. Presumably, that's where we're going to bring him in. I think that's where he's played his best football, despite being able to play on either wing. I think the number 10 spot, if we bring him in, is where he should play. And as I've previously said a few times, I think he's a massive upgrade in that area. Hopefully throughout the day-to-day, we have a lot more rumours coming through. Even getting some confirmed signings would be great. So we're not leaving all the business to deadline day. Saying that, it would give us a really exciting deadline day live stream, which we're going to be doing tomorrow night. So we'll have our old firm preview, half six to half seven, and then going from there on the whole night until midnight, we'll have a deadline day live stream. We have plenty of special guests included. I'm going to do a wee preview tweet later on, and you'll see who we're going to have on. But it's going to be a really exciting night. We're going to have Scotty and Doug on for most of the night, and they'll be looking at all the rumours coming through. Hopefully, it's a really exciting night. We've not had many exciting deadline days recently. So hopefully this one pulls through, but again, I would still like to see a couple of signings confirmed today. That's the end of the video today, so if you have enjoyed it, please don't forget to like and subscribe. Don't forget we'll be live tonight and live tomorrow. So please subscribe, please check it out, and have a great day.